I trust you are glad to be here in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. It indeed is good to be with you. Before we begin our worship service this morning, I want to just begin with a couple of announcements. First, I'd like to say, if you see the red books on the either end of, your, of the aisle, if you would um, take those down and register your attendance with us, um, especially if you're visiting this morning, um, it's good to have some information there. And particularly, I'm going to highlight some announcements that, there, that are in the newsletter and some that aren't. But if you don't receive our newsletter, that's a great opportunity to um, to mark um, to, to you know mark newsletter on there and write your email address um, because we don't necessarily have everybody's email addresses we've discovered. So um, I encourage you to, to do that. If you would like to receive the newsletter and be kept up to date on all of the things going on in the life of the body here. Uh, related to that, also, um, you sh- there are some new uh, books out there for next week. We've been uh, making our way through our ser- sermon series on the Lord's Prayer. And um, uh, and Derek has uh, the book for next week out there. It's got devotionals for six days, and um, it, it's been very excellent. Those of you, if you've gone along with it, you... you um, would know that. And also, if you would like a digital copy of it, some people have said that they would like to be emailed. That's perfectly fine as well. Um, you can just send Derek an email, um, and then uh, we, can get you, uh, we can get you a digital copy if you'd prefer that uh, for some reason. Um, also, related to our sermon series, um, today I will not be preaching, and Derek will not be preaching. We will be having, some of you may have met our, um, we have a, a student doing a practicum with us from Indiana Wesleyan, is a senior there, Alex Lawrence. Alex, you give us a wave. Some of you have some of you have met Alex uh, or seen him, and as for part of a practicum, he's got to preach in a church. So this is a church, and he's going to preach in it. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. So I, I want you to be very, very friendly to Alex. Look, have friendly faces. You know, uh, nobody falling asleep or anything, please. Uh, um, so Alex, it's been good to get to know him a little bit, spend some time with him. He uh, he he ended up here because he was a student of uh, Professor Tim Helm, um, who taught him homiletics. Yeah. So that's. Uh, instant credibility here that, that you know you <clears throat> being a student of Tim Helm so um, very excited for him uh, to, to, to share with us this morning um, and then finally I just want to make an announcement uh, re- related to uh, a couple things the the eclipse uh, event this past Monday uh, some many of you were here for that and I want to thank you for your, I think we have some pictures but I want to I want to thank you for your participation and your help with that it was a really successful event in my estimation Probably total, I think we had probably about 300 people or somewhere in that neighborhood uh, of, of people there. And um, it was just a really awesome opportunity. It turned out to be um, <clears throat> really a, a ministry of, in my observation, a ministry of hospitality. And everyone was very grateful uh, for, um, for, uh, for that. You know, it was, it was a, lot of, a lot of people that were Christians and they were, they were traveling for the eclipse. Uh, they were looking for some place to go and they came here because... You know, hey, they have worship and food and other Christians to hang out with. So, great, let's uh, let's do it. So they they came here, and that was a really good opportunity to be a, to have a really a ministry of hospitality. You see, uh, out I put it out on this week. The um, we put out a map where you could see where everyone was from. All the people from Indiana put pins where they were from. People from all over the state, and then there's also a map, a, a U.S. map. We could have people from. We had people from. Uh, all, all different states, Minnesota, I mean, Wisconsin, you know, all of these different places that people came, and we were off, able to all, offer them Christian hospitality as their brothers and sisters in Christ. So it was a really awesome opportunity. We, I think we made, it one, we made in terms of our concession stand that we had going, we made over $2,000 for Best Bags. Um, <clears throat> um, so that's a really awesome, again, a really awesome uh Awesome thing. And uh, we had food left over. So uh, uh, another thing to this afternoon, the announcement that was in the newsletter is that um, we're going to have some hot dogs and, uh, and some chips and some uh, potato salad and baked beans and, other, and other stuff, whatever else is, is in the kitchen after service. You know, we thought, hey, look, hot dog buns, you can't really freeze them, so we just better use them. So we're going to have some time of fellowship. And if you don't have lunch plans, you can stick around for some hot dogs and some whatever else we have. All right, sound good? Yep. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention, too, is in the, in the eclipse, <clears throat> like a lot of people, uh, this will kind of, kind of serve as our call to worship, um, but one of the things that's interesting is um, when, we, when we think about uh, the, the eclipse, a lot, I've heard a lot of whack, what I was calling wackadoodle theologies, like, you know, uh, it, it, you know all, of these, all of these things, what does it mean, what does it, you know, and, and, and all these really silly things. Um, but really, what I think we see is that in Genesis 1-1, God says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
And so if we should learn something from it, what we should learn is that God created the world in such a way that it's orderly and it's organized and so that people, you know, 20 years ago and decades ago could determine that this is going to happen and this is where it's going to happen because God, God is a God of order and created the universe in such a way that it is, uh, uh, that it is orderly, right? And, and we also, I think we could, I was, I was thinking about the theme of light and darkness. I was thinking about that, that you know, the, the verse we used as our theme verse uh, was, was John 1.5. Which said that, um, which said that, uh, it says that a light shines in the darkness, right? Um, but, but then this, it's actually a very sad verse because the second half of that, we cut it off and made it happy. But, but, the, but, the, but the second half of that verse is, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And the darkness, but the darkness did not comprehend it. And, and so there's, there's actually a very sad tone to that. So we want to be people, those who, we want to be those who are comprehending and those who are understanding the light of Christ. Amen. That's our desire, and that's our goal, because we serve a God who, who, as we see in that verse again, he runs to the darkness. And so we want to be people of the light. We want to comprehend the light, and we want to share the light with other people. So let that be our call to worship. Would you stand as we, as we begin to worship the Lord? Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you for, for you being a God of order and a God who, who runs to us. We ask, Lord, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit today. Would you give us ears that are open to hearing and hearts that are bent towards responding in obedience to all that you have for us today and every day. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. By the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me.
your hands for his use. These are holy hands. He's given us holy hands. He works through these hands and so these hands are holy. These are Standing 
Lord, indeed, we thank you today that your presence is here with us. Lord, we thank you that we can stand on this holy ground gathered with one another to worship and praise you, for you alone are worthy. We give you thanks this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, this time, as we do here at Hanfield, we're going to go to the Lord in, pr in prayer. And, and as we do, uh, if you have a request that is on your heart or if you'd like to intercede on behalf of someone else, we ask you stand where you're at and those around you can lay a hand on your shoulder. And the rest of us will stretch our arms out towards you as we gather with you in prayer. So this morning, if you have a request or would like to intercede on behalf of someone else, would you stand? Let us pray. Again, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning that we are indeed standing on holy ground because you are here and you are with us. Lord, we give you thanks for that. We give you thanks for your presence that you gather here with us this morning, Lord. We praise you and thank you for that. And Lord, we pray that as we are gathered here, the Lord, you would indeed make us holy as you are holy. So, Lord, I pray that you would give us holy hands to do holy things. Lord, may you give us holy mouths to speak holy words. May you give us holy minds to think holy thoughts. Lord, I pray that you would be with us here and that you uh, would do the work of grace that only you can as we come and surrender to you. Lord, come and make us holy as you are holy. Lord, this morning we, we give you thanks as well for the, this past week, especially for this eclipse event that we were able to have and the people that came here. Lord, I pray that you would be with those that were here. Some of them knew you, but some didn't. And maybe that is just the starting of something that's with, within them, Lord, just a little seed that is there. I pray that you would continue to work on their hearts and work on their lives. And Lord, I give you thanks for those that were here and helping and volunteering and uh, for the, the monies that were able to be collected for best bags. Lord, we give you thanks for this program here that helps to feed children on the weekend, and we pray that, that this would be a, a blessing for them, and that they would be able to feel your love through that. So, Lord, we pray that you could be with the best bags and the children and families that are receiving this food, and uh, Lord, may they be blessed because of it, and may they know that it comes not from us, but ultimately from you. So, Lord, we pray that you would be with them. Lord, we also pray this morning for Alex. We give you thanks for him and being with us here today as we prepare to hear your word from him and pray that, Lord, you would just anoint him and that your spirit would fill him and that we would have ears to hear and that you would speak through your servant this morning. We also stretch our arms out towards those who are standing. Lord, you know what it is that has brought them to their feet today, and we trust and believe that you are already at work. Lord, we give you thanks that you hear our prayers and that you respond. You are a God who hears and responds. We are so thankful for that this morning that we can lift our requests and petitions to you, knowing that you hear, knowing that you care. So, Lord, we ask that you would be at work in each one of these situations that has brought these people to their feet today. And ultimately, Lord, we ask that your will would be done. Again, Lord, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for being gathered here. It is good to be gathered to worship you with your people. And I pray that this worship would just not be limited here, but that we would live lives of worship, praising you wherever we go. For you, are, you alone are worthy. So Holy Spirit, we pray this morning that you would come and open our eyes that we may see from you. Holy Spirit, may you come and open our ears that we may hear from you. Holy Spirit, come and open our minds that we may understand from you. May we turn to you and be healed. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, the children are dismissed to second half ministry. They can meet Miss Shirley at the uh, double doors in the back. And as they gather uh, together, we'll say a prayer over them in their time uh, as they gather, as well as for the tithes and offerings that have been 
uh, or will be collected. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these children. We know that they are a blessing from you. We pray that you would be with them during their time together. Uh, Lord, may they grow closer to you and grow in their knowledge of who you are. And we pray that you would be with those that are working and volunteering with them this morning. We give you thanks for them. We also pray, Lord, that you could be with uh, the tithes and offerings that have been or will be given. Lord, we're thankful for this opportunity to give to you what is already yours. And pray this morning that you would bless both gift and giver. And that we would be good stewards with what we receive in Jesus' name. Amen. I ask that you would uh, come into this song remaining in that mode of prayer. Letting Christ minister to you, you listening to him, saying words to him you need to say. And if this song then creates those words that you need to say back, then join in in singing too. But as you listen, as you ponder, spend that time right here just talking to the Lord.
that be my posture. I pray that be our posture. Every day, every minute, and every second of our lives. You are worthy to be praised. You are holy. We give you the glory, Lord. Center us on that today and every day to follow. In your name, amen. You may be seated. Well, hello. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Alex, Alex Lawrence, and um, yes, I am here for practicum. But before I say anything else, um, I want you guys to know um, that when Katie and I came to Hanfield, just the love and the care and just, you accepted us as, as one of your own, and I can't thank you enough. This has been more than a practicum for me. This has been an introduction to uh, where I want to be for the next year or so before I, I go off into ministry. So thank you so much, Hanfield. Um, Today I have the honor of bringing the word, but just as Tim would say, just as Curtis would say, I pray that you don't see me up here speaking, but that the Lord's word would be preached, that you would leave this place stewing on just God's words. If I say something silly, you can stew on that too, but... <laughs> Hopefully, when you leave, you feel the Lord leaving with you. That is my prayer. In this prayer, um, the Lord's Prayer, we see the words, Our Father who art in heaven. And Derek took us through that this last week. We looked at it, and something for me that I noticed was, this isn't just an address to who we're talking to, but an expression of the relationship for who we're talking to. Our Father who art in heaven. There's a relationship there. There's something that we can participate in there. Something I uh, 
something that stood out to me, and maybe it did for you as well. I think maybe this was just Derek's words, so shout out, Derek, you're awesome. Um, But he said, the Lord's Prayer is more about how to live than it is how to pray. And so let that phrase bridge us into this week. Again, a phrase of the Lord's Prayer where I looked at it and it just felt like a tagline to the first part. Hallowed be thy name. It just felt like, oh, oh yeah, I probably should, I should probably give God more glory than just our Father. I should say, hallowed be thy name. But it's more than that. This isn't a tagline, but a call to our posture, to the way that we approach our Father. The first thing that I did when looking at this was the word hallowed. Um, it, it, I didn't know really what it meant. And so I looked into the word as it's presented in Matthew 6, um, the scripture that we looked at last week with Derek. Um, the original language is hagiazo, and hagiazo means render or acknowledge to be venerable. Now, if you were me in this situation, I don't know what that last word means either. (laughs) And so I looked that up as well. And venerable means to put a great deal of respect, especially because of age, wisdom, or character. And so hallowed is giving off this feeling of giving glory to the Lord. There's a great deal of respect that he has earned. And so in our posture of acknowledging him, in our posture of beginning a conversation with him, we sit on this idea that we are giving him glory. God's glory, the glory that we give God is our chief and first and greatest concern in this life. Everything that you do centers around the idea of honoring God, glorifying his name. And so it makes sense that these words would be at the beginning, as we talk to him, as we hold him to a high regard, a high respect, that these words would be at the beginning of the prayer. But don't miss it. Don't gloss over it. Yes, as weeks to come, we're going to have some really awesome sections of this prayer that will go into extreme depth of what God has done, what God will do. But don't miss who God is. There was something in the, in the study guide this week that really stood out to me that kind of describes this posture that we have. Whatever comes to me, however low I may sink, no matter how deep the waters be through which I may be called to pass, Lord, magnify thyself in and through me. I've had times in my life where it was easy to give God the glory. I've also had times in my life where it wasn't my main priority. Early in life, I became a Christian pretty early on, got baptized pretty early on. I grew up in a strong Christian household. Shout out my parents. Um, I was in a very good situation growing up, going to a church consistently, being in the Word. But something that I recognize now about my early life as a Christian was that it was very ritualistic. I was going through the motions. I opened the Bible when someone told me, open to. I prayed when someone was around. 
but didn't feel it necessary to do on my own. God, in the most basic sense, was a convenience to me. I went to college, started out at Manchester University. I don't know if, does anyone know where that is? Awesome, because when people ask me and I say North Manchester, (laughs) it doesn't give them any information unless they know. So I started out at Manchester University. The goal was to be a football player. The goal was to be a religious studies major. And the goal was to be in control as much as I could of my life. And who can blame me? It was a scary time. The year was 2020. I didn't know what tomorrow was going to look like. And being the person that didn't know how to let go of my own life, it bothered me that I didn't know what tomorrow looked like. And fast forward just a few months later, everything that I had feared was true. I was no longer a football player. After 14 years, my career was done. I was no longer a religious studies major. I had jumped into psychology and found out that I didn't like that either. (laughs) But the biggest thing was that I was not in control, even physically. I was suffering from concussion symptoms, long-term concussion symptoms, And I still deal with those to this day. I found myself lost. I had done it my way. And I had come to the end of the rope. And I didn't know where to go. And with this, I looked for what would give me energy. And ironically enough, I found it in energy drinks. I spent most of my time relying on these energy drinks to give me the energy that I did not possess normally. I woke up, I was exhausted, energy drink. I don't want to go to that class, energy drink. I need to get a workout in, it's probably good to take care of my body, energy drink. That caught up with me. Caught up fast. I had a really, really rough night and consumed four energy drinks. And my heart stopped. But God pulled me from that moment and said, Alex, I'm not finished with you yet. To God be the glory. But isn't that so easy to say in a story like that? How many times do we find ourselves that far down. Reality is, a normal life, a normal day in your life probably isn't as drastic. You have to go to work. You have to take the kids somewhere. Or for me, I have to sit through three classes back to back to back. (laughs) And they're amazing professors, but they're right after each other. And, you know, it's just like, Ah, how is it that we can give God the glory in the hardest times and on the mountaintops? But in the in-between, the 95% of our life, we find it difficult. The posture that we are approaching our Father in heaven is to give him glory no matter the circumstances. It's not about us. It's about him. Another way to describe God would be he is holy. I heard it described, I don't remember their name, but I heard it described in a sermon recently that Holy is a word that we give to God because he's so different from anything that we could understand. He is holy. Holy means to be set apart. 
But here's the second step of the phrase. Hallowed be thy name is also a call. We have to be holy because God is holy. Let's open our Bibles. We're going to turn to 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 13 through 16. I'll be reading out of the NIV. So if the words are different, that's okay. We're reading together. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. The word of the Lord for the people of the people of God. Sorry. <laughs> Holiness is a praiseworthy attribute of God, but it's also a call on his people. So how do we go about being holy as my father is holy? Our call begins by coming to him as we are. A phrase you probably have heard before. Come to God as you are. But let me tell you, this call to holiness says, come to God as you are. Be transformed and be sent out. That means something has to change. When we're in relationship with God, transformation takes place, which means the old self is dead and gone. The new self is here. It is you, and you are called to be holy. And so that's what we do. The change is made inside us by God so that we may go out, bring glory and honor to him, to be holy because he is holy. And my natural feeling when someone says, be holy because God is holy, I want to say something, to, something like this to God. God, I want to be just like you. I said the same thing to my earthly father when I was younger. And I recall him saying back to me, Alex, I want you to be better than I ever was. And I took that and I ran with it. I wanted my dad to be so proud of me that that request to be better than he ever was, I had given it my best shot. But just a year ago, reflecting on this in thanksgiving of the loving and caring and strong father that I grew up with. I recalled he was trying to inspire me in reflection of things he had failed. He had thought about his life. He didn't want me to fail like he had. He wanted me to do better. And it's a worthy call of my Father to say that. But when our Heavenly Father calls us, inspire, he, He's trying to inspire us to be holy as He is holy, He's doing that in the reflection of His love for you. He's not asking you to be something that He's not. He's calling you to chase something that he is. We are to be holy because God is holy. In the next section, 
is thy name. Hallowed be thy name. There are many names in the Bible that have described attributes, actions, things that God has done. But the reality is we do not have the language to fully name God, to give him one name that fully explains him. But God says that he has revealed himself in creation. He is who he is. We are a part of that creation. Therefore, we represent the name of God to the world. We need to speak well of his name. God has revealed himself to us, and he is worthy to be praised. St. Augustine once said, The name of God is always holy. Why then do we pray that it may be hallowed, except that we may be hallowed by it? We pray then that which, that, that which is holy always may be hallowed in us. He's saying we pray that God's name be hallowed so it may be hallowed in us. We represent the name of God to the world. We must speak well of it. So when you testify to who the Father is to the world, our greatest call to spread the word of the Lord to all, when we do that, we need to talk about how the Father created the world out of love. He created us. The same Father sent His one and only Son down to the earth, which was filled of people that did not love Him well, that did not speak His name well. We hear the words from John 3.16 all the time, but the words of John 3.17 say that he did not come to the world to condemn it, but to save it. The love of the Father is worthy to be praised. The Holy Spirit is among us today, alive inside us. God is with us every step of the way. So when you testify to the glory of God, when we say God is holy, when we praise his name, when you share his name and his love with the world, the way that we speak about him, should be about his love, should be about what he has done, what he's going to do, and don't miss it, who God is. How do we expect the world to know God if we don't introduce him? Why do we jump straight to his actions, straight to his plan? Why don't we Start, as we do the Lord's Prayer, with simply who God is. That's what we would do if you were introducing your friend. The same is true. So what is our posture? Our posture is one of surrender and one of praise. When you surrender to a holy God, transformation happens. The call to be holy comes from your surrender. That's the first step. Don't overthink it. We jump to all the things we need to do in order to be holy. We give everyone the five steps of holiness. We give everyone, okay, you do this, and then you do that, and then you do this. 
Guys, simply start with the posture of the heart. I will praise you, Lord, because you're worthy of it, and I will surrender to you, Lord, because I trust you. That's how we begin being holy. But don't take it from me. I'm just a 22-year-old. I don't know much. I've got a lot to learn. Even in my journey with the Lord, it's been just a handful of years of me really, truly spending time with Him, being in relationship with Him. So don't take it from me. Experience Him yourself. Spend time in His Word, not because you're told to, because you're drawn to. Pray to Him, not because you're told to talk to God, because you want to talk to God, because you trust Him and you love Him. Don't take it from me because I will fail just as everyone else in this room has at some point. Take it from the Lord. Our Father who art in heaven, our Father, we need to experience the goodness of God for ourselves. We need to commit to giving him the glory in all that we do. We acknowledge that he is holy, but we accept the call to be holy ourselves. And the posture begins with surrendering and praising. That's how the world will come to know God. So, Pray the words, hallowed be our name, to yourself real quick. Just sit on it for a second. Hallowed be thy name. Sit on those words this week as we go out, as you testify to your coworkers, as you introduce God to someone who may have never met him. You reintroduce the loving father to someone who was told something else about God. As we go out, as the church goes out to spread the word and the love of God, sit on the words, hallowed be thy name. Because that's, that's who he is. God is holy. We hold him to the highest respect and honor. Everything we do gives him glory. Everything that we do is worship of him. That's the life that we live here. So no, these words are not a tagline to clarify, yeah, I love the Lord. These are the words that tell us the posture in which we enter conversation with the Lord and how we're sent out. Let's pray. Hallowed be thy name, Father. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Thank you for creating us. Thank you for your son. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your word, Lord, that we get to participate. But Lord, most of all, thank you for your love. I pray as we're sent out today, that we be reminded that you are holy, God. And let that shape not only the posture of our heart, but in turn, the way that we treat others, the way that we treat ourselves. God, guide us. 
Not our will, but yours be done. In your name, amen. Let's just carry on with some of the uh, thought of that, letting the Lord know that we want more of him. I want you more, more, more. I want you more, more, more. I want you Let him know that you need him today. I need you more, more, more. I need you more, more, more. I need you more, more, more. I want you more. Never running out of ways. I'm never running out of ways to praise you. God, I praise you. I'm never running out of words. Never running out of words to thank you. God, I thank you. I'm never running out of ways. I'm never running out of ways to praise you. God, I praise you. I'm never running out of words. Never running out of words to thank you. God, I thank you. Never running out of words, never running out of words to thank you. Let's talk about how we can go and praise him today. We're going to talk about how we can take and incorporate these words into our lives. And then let it overflow so the other people around us will see him. May his name be made holy by your actions. May people bless his name, see him as holy because of how you display him before others. Sometimes you got to dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise him when it don't make sense. Sometimes you got to stare down the giant, Worship in the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air. I'll give you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise. Give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison. Cry out to the heaven. Shout it till the doors swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles. Brave in the battle, worship with your hands, sir. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy, yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise. Give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Faithful all my life. Blessings day and night. Countless reasons why 
I'll praise you anywhere. Every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, faithful all my life, blessings day and night, countless reasons why. I'll praise you anywhere, every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest, he is worth. Praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. I'll praise. Father, indeed, we praise you for you are holy and you have called us to be holy as well. So we give you praise and honor that not only are you this holy God, but you have indeed called us to be like yourself and you will empower us and transform us so that we can indeed be holy. This is not a vain promise or a vain calling, but you will and desire to do this work in us. And so we give you praise for that, for we can do nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray, by the power of the Holy Spirit and to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. As you go from this place of worship, may you go and be holy people as he is holy and represent him to the world as we've been heard and we've been encouraged today. As we depart this worship service, I leave you with these words. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide on each and every one of you until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. Amen.